whether we gather here in person, online, or worship from our automobiles. We are Faith First, Families First, Anderson First, and our pathway to live this is by living our faith, nurturing families, serving our communities. It's a joy, and we welcome a returning member to our flock this morning, Ellen Rhodes. She will join us by transfer later in the service. Invite you to greet her following the worship service and make your own personal welcome to the congregation and this church family. Our opportunity for fellowship after worship has returned with coffee and donuts on the porch. So feel free to in, have enjoy uh, some of the refreshments and the fellowship that follow worship service. Today is a beautiful day to do so. Also, just to alleviate any confusion, we will continue to collect our offering and our attendance prayer cards in the blue box that's on the table as you enter the park. So please continue to use that. We will not be distributing baskets or uh, blue boxes. I'm excited about welcoming our new conference superintendent, Reverend Sanito Mako. He will be joining us and leading worship next Sunday. Um, next Sunday, we will worship only in one service. It will be here at 9 o'clock with a reception that will follow. And I hope um, I am counting on each one of you to be present and let your uh, voices be heard and your welcome heard by uh, Reverend Mako. So please come and join us here at the park in person, if at all possible. Let us now, as we prepare to stand for our greeting time, we'll greet one another. We'll remain standing then also for our call to worship and our uh, hymn that we have to sing together. So let's stand and greet one another with the joy of knowing Jesus Christ. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Would you sit, remain standing and join me for the call to worship? What story are we going to hear today? It hums in the rivers and calls us in the trees. It whispers throughout all creation. God's story speaks in our hearts, in our lives. Why then are we to tell this story? This story claims our lives through the cross. This story shapes our future through the Spirit. God's story is told through our life and mind in this time and place. Please remain standing. Oh, Jesus, I 
can invite the children to join me up here. Come on up, kiddos. Sure, you can come up too. So a few weeks ago, oops, watch your feet. Come on up. A few weeks ago, come on up. Come up here and stand with me for a minute. I gotta ask you a couple questions. So a few weeks ago, I we talked about how we might hear God talk to us. Can you remember some of those ways we might hear God talk to us? Hmm. You remember? Do we say that maybe if we prayed, we could hear God talk? And do we say that if we read the Bible, we might see God talk to us that way? Well, in our story that we're going to hear a little bit later, you're going to hear about another way that God talked in a very strange way. How many of you have pets at home? If you have a pet, raise your hand. You have a couple? You have fish? What if your pet began talking to you? Would that be crazy? Yes. Well, in our story that's going to get read for us in just a little while, we're going to hear about a guy. His name is really weird. It's not like John or Fred or Steve. His name is Balaam. Do you know anybody named Balaam? No? No. Well, Balaam, he's going to go on a little journey. And as he heads off on this journey, he's riding on his donkey. And as he's riding on his donkey, you know what happens? All of a sudden, his his donkey goes off the path and out into a field. What do you think Balaam thought? Do you think he was very happy with his donkey? Nope, he wasn't. So he kind of gets angry at his donkey, and he gets back on him and gets him on the right path again. And all of a sudden, he runs into a wall and crushes Balaam's foot and Balaam gets angry again even madder you're right and then they head down the path a little bit further and guess what the donkey does this time do you remember grace he just lays down and he stops going and Balaam is so angry well that donkey God had sent an angel to stop Balaam. And Balaam couldn't see it, but the donkey did. So the donkey started talking to Balaam and says, Why are you being so mean and beating me? I'm trying to protect you. There's this angel right there that's trying to stop you. So you see, we're going to hear a story a little bit more. Pastor Corrine's going to talk about that. And we're going to hear about crazy ways that maybe God talks to us. But if God's talking to us, what do we need to do? We need to listen. We need to use our ears and listen. So this morning, as you guys take your packs back with you, there's some Play-Doh in there. Maybe you might make that Play-Doh, use that Play-Doh to make a donkey. Or maybe you might use that Play-Doh to make another way that God might talk to you. Or maybe you'll draw on your paper some ways that God can talk to you. So I invite you to listen to more of the story today. To listen for God to talk to you and for God to talk with you. And then think about what that means for us, okay? Have a seat, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
As always, I call you to remember the prayer concerns that are listed in your bulletin, those that come through on prayer mail. Um, these folk uh, count on your prayers, uh, your support, um, as they go through their uh, difficult times. Uh, join me now in prayer. Gracious and loving God, as we come to you in prayer this morning, we lay open our hearts before you. We admit to you our own short-sightedness, but you already know that we tend to think more of ourselves than our neighbors next door, not to mention our neighbors that live around the world. We get so caught up in the needs of our own houses and we forget to think about, much less pray for people whom we've never met. As we try to pray for starving children in countries we cannot place on a map as we attempt to join in solidarity with women being sold into slavery, as we struggle to comprehend the motivation of people who abuse and neglect their families, the chasm between our quiet, sheltered lives and their lives of turmoil becomes clear. We struggle even to see the other side of the divide. How, O oh God, can we even believe that we know how to pray for their needs when we honestly have no idea what those needs may be? And so humbled, we come before you now, placing our faith wholly in you, trusting that you know those needs which are obscured by our short-sighted eyes, believing that in your love and mercy you will reach out and touch the lives we cannot comprehend. As we pray, Holy God, we feel your call on our lives. As clearly as the disciples mending their nets heard the words, Come, follow me, our souls resonate with the challenge to shift our focus from fishing for perch and bass and to women and men. We know with every fiber of our being that you are calling us to be part somehow of your healing, life-giving touch both in our community and around the world. Lord of life, may our squinting glance across the chasm of miles of language and culture, our desire to see your will done on earth as it is in heaven, and our prayers for our neighbors not end with these words, but continue day by day, moment by moment in all our actions. May this prayer 
through your grace. Become for us the way that we are connected through your love with all creation. May our prayers transform our lives. And may all our words and deeds, everything we are, be an offering to you. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Jesus, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like at this time to invite Ellen Rhodes and anyone that she would like to have come up with her to join her. 
The other pastors will be joining me up here as well. Ellen is coming to us by transfer from St. Luke's United Methodist Church in Indianapolis, and we are thrilled to have her joining us again. I understand that you had been with this congregation years ago, so we are grateful to have you returning to us. Ellen was baptized as a young person in the Church of God in Broken Bow, uh, Nebraska. The United Methodist Church does not rebaptize those who have already received Christian baptism in any form. Our understanding is that baptism does not need to be uh, repeated. That understanding rests on the steadfast faithfulness of God. Baptism is an act of God, and God does it right the first time. With this already done, Ellen is now ready to transfer her membership from one United Methodist Church to another. By acknowledging membership into the church created by Jesus Christ, which is sustained yet today by the Holy Spirit, we as sisters and brothers in Christ are reminded that it is through the sacrament of baptism that we are initiated into Christ's holy church and that we are incorporated into Christ's almighty acts of salvation and given new birth through the power of the Holy Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Ellen, I now ask you the question of membership. As a member of Anderson First United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, respond, I will. I will. Praise God. Welcome. Members of this family and this body of Christ, please stand as you are able. I commend Ellen Rhodes to your love and care. Do you promise to keep her in your prayers, minister beside her, and nurture her in her faith? If so, respond, we will. Do you renew your covenant with God to faithfully participate alongside Ellen by participating in the ministries of this church through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, respond with God's help, we will. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you today for Ellen, her relationship with you and her commitment to serve you through your church. Bless her continued ministry, her witness beyond this body and the future of this congregation as together we strive to be more like Christ in the world. In your power we pray. Amen. Congratulations. They have a certificate for you. You may be seated. Thank you. Let us welcome Ellen. For your gifts, um, we say thank you. Loving God, whose giving knows no ending, we know how to say thank you when we have received. Right now, we say thank you as we give. In our giving, hear our heartfelt gratitude for all that you are and all that we have. Bless these gifts for your mission in the world and bless the other gifts we have to bring to your mission. Open our eyes to the ways you are calling us to participate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The reading today is from Numbers, chapter 22, verses 21 through 35. Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went off with the nobleman from Moab. As he was going, though, God's anger flared. The angel of God stood in the road to block his way. Balaam was riding his donkey, accompanied by his two servants. When the donkey saw the angel blocking the road and brandishing a sword, she veered off the road into the ditch. 
Balaam beat the donkey and got her back on the road. But as they were going through a vineyard with a fence on either side, the donkey again saw God's angel blocking the way and veered into the fence, crushing Balaam's foot against the fence. Balaam hit her again. God's angel blocked the way yet again, a very narrow passage this time. There was no getting through on the right or left. Seeing the angel, Balaam's donkey sat down under him. Balaam lost his temper. He beat the donkey with his stick. Then God gave speech to the donkey. She said to Balaam, What have I ever done to you that you have beat me these three times? Balaam said, Because you have been playing games with me. If I had a sword, I would have killed you by now. The donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your trusty donkey on whom you've ridden for years right up until now? Have I ever done anything like this to you before? Have I? He said, No. Then God helped Balaam see what was going on. He saw God's angel blocking the way, brandishing a sword. Balaam fell to the ground, his face in the dirt. God's angel said to him, Why have you beaten your poor donkey these three times? I have come here to block your way because you are getting away ahead of yourself. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If she hadn't, I would have killed you by this time, but not the donkey. I would have let her off. Balaam said to God's angel, I have sinned. I had no idea you were standing in the road blocking my way. If you don't like what I'm doing, I'll head back. But God's angel said to Balaam, Go ahead and go with them, but only say what I tell you to say, absolutely no other word. And so Balaam continued to go with Balak's nobles. This is God's word for God's people today. Many years ago, I wanted to have a hummingbird feeder, and I imagine many of you have one hanging off a porch or somewhere so you can watch the hummingbirds come and go. My experience was it would the liquid inside the hummingbird feeder would disappear. I assumed it was just evaporating. I never saw a hummingbird. So I made a comment one day in a conversation with a group of folks, and and they said, well, it's not necessarily that you don't have hummingbirds because we all live around here and there are hummingbirds everywhere. What's wrong is you don't have eyes to see them. I was a little bit insulted. <laughs> but I decided to buy a different hummingbird feeder and try again. And you know... I began to watch very carefully. I saw them everywhere. I could even pick them out on tree limbs and up in the wires. They would sit and they would wait. They actually guarded. One would claim the hummingbird feeder and it would guard it. And if somebody else came in its territory, it would swoop down. And they just moved so fast. You had to kind of be out of the way when they got going like this. I felt like I was going to get skewered. But not having eyes trained to see them. And once I allowed myself just to focus and be trained to see them, I could. It was just pretty miraculous. But you know, folks, that's like our relationship with God. We need eyes that are trained to see God. See God in God's creation. See God in the face of a stranger. See God all around us in the hands and feet of those who serve others. To see God. And it's not just seeing with our eyes. We train our hearts to see God as well. There was a pastor that was preaching on a Sunday morning, it was a dark, dark morning, and it was storming outside. They knew that 
things might be iffy this morning, but sure enough, electricity went out. And because it was so dark outside, it was just pitch dark inside the sanctuary. And there was a pause. The pastor was in the middle of his sermon. There was a pause. And from the back of the sanctuary, somebody said, Pastor, keep preaching. We can still see Jesus in the dark. Those are eyes of the heart that are trained to see God, even in the dark. Well, we might think that this is Balaam's story. I mean, maybe, just maybe, he didn't have eyes that were trained to see. I mean, he seems like a pretty good guy, right? Balaam is one who talks to God. He's, got, he's wearing the title of prophet. He talks to God. He listens to God. He has dinner with a king. He's known by his people. He's well known by the people. He uh, is a legend in the other neighborhoods around him. In fact, Balaam gets more page coverage in the Bible than does Mary, the mother of Jesus, or any one of Jesus' apostles pretty important guy it would seem like he had this right and you see his story the story Balaam's story he is comes into the picture in this book of numbers when Jesus's people had been roaming around in the wilderness remember we're in the Old Testament Roaming around in the wilderness, they're nearing the end of their 40 years, and they've camped in the land of Moab, just across from Jericho. Well, the king of the Moabites is a bit nervous. I mean, he's got all these Israelites camped here, and he's heard about their reputation. I mean, their God parted a sea, and all these Egyptians were just suffocated under the waves of the sea. So he's a bit concerned, and, but he's got a solution. He is going to call on a prophet, and he's going to invite a prophet to come and curse the Israelites, and they will be defeated and once the Israelites are defeated, they can run them out of the neighborhood. That would make the king very happy. Balaam moves into this picture as one who is holy. I mean, he turns to God, and he turns to God in prayer. He wants to hear from God. He wants to see what God is laying before him to do what God wants him to do. And he asks, and he asks, and he asks. You see, Balaam's picture is kind of a dark one. Balaam doesn't necessarily obey the picture that God has set before him. He chooses to reject it. This is part of Balaam's story. In fact, he might be more like a gentleman who was named David Rakoff. David Rakoff was a, a big name back in the 70s, 1970s, and he was one that he owned a Tokyo company that was working on a program that allowed people in different parts of the city to communicate with each other through this program. He became so upset with the nonsense of the thought that people would communicate with each other through a program instead of just making a telephone call or walking down the street and talking to them, that he 
he left the company. He said, I don't want anything to do with this. I'm out of here. That program became our internet. David went on to be asked to give his professional opinion on a new rising young blonde vocalist. So he went to the club where she was singing, and he gave her a complete thumbs down. He said, she is lousy, not going to amount to anything in this field. She went on to become Madonna. Then he became a publisher. He received a manuscript that he read through, and he spent a lot of time deliberating over this manuscript and just said that it's, it's trivial drivel. Wanted nothing to do with it, dismissed it. That manuscript became a book entitled Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. In the 1990s, it was on the bestseller list that whole 90s, and it sold over 15 million copies. It's not that he didn't see it. He rejected it. How many times have we done that? If you would join me in thinking about this, I thought about this a lot reading through Balaam's story. How many times have I had an opportunity set before me and I rejected it? How many times have I seen a need and decided to ignore it? How many times have I been called on to grow, to become more than I am right now, to do more than I'm doing now? And I decided to stay just the way I am. Thank you very much. I'm comfortable. We, too, see what God is calling us to do to be and we have a decision to make just like Balaam had to make now there is one in this story that is seeing that is seeing the presence of God in that angel <laughs> that's the donkey God used the donkey to get Balaam's attention Remember that. God used the donkey to get Balaam's attention. I was 12 years old. I remember this very vividly. When I first, actually probably was not the first time I'd heard the story. It was the first time I paid attention to the story. You see, I had just gotten my horse. I was one of those kids that for every birthday, every Christmas, every event where I could possibly receive a gift... And anybody said, what do you want to get? I would say, I want a pony. I want a horse. That was my mantra. I drove my parents nuts. Well, finally, when I was 12, we had to board him, but I got my horse. He was a Palomino quarter horse. I named him Lad. He was a year old when I received him, so my very strict instructions were, he cannot be ridden yet, or you'll give him a sway back, so don't ride him. But you can do everything else. You can clean his stall. You can do everything that goes along with taking care of the horse. And lo and behold, if I did, we were best friends. And I prayed to God that Lad would talk to me. That's how I remember the story. Tell me if I'm going to get into trouble. Tell me if what lays ahead for me. Tell me what's going to go on in my life. Or just tell me what you're thinking. Well, Lad did that, only he didn't speak it out in human language, so I understood. But we spent so much time together that I did understand. 
But you see, God speaks to us. And we have a decision to make. God shows us what he wants us to do, how he wants us to live. And we can say, well, God, I am so comfortable. Thank you very much, but I'm good right now. I'm good enough right now. I used to know someone who said, I want to be just good enough to get into heaven. Don't want to do any more than that. Just good enough. Or maybe we just reject it. Or we ignore it. Or maybe like Balaam tried, we ask and we ask and we ask, thinking that if we ask enough times, God will change his mind and show us something different. But God doesn't. And you see, day in and day out, we have to decide if we're going to pay attention to what God is showing us. And you say, well, I don't know what God's showing me. I don't see anything. I don't see anything different that God is showing me to do with my life. That's no excuse. Think of the donkey, or donkeys maybe, that are in your path to get your attention to what God is showing you to do or be for God. God will do that. Balaam's story proves that God can use anything to draw our attention to God to show us what God is calling us to do or be. So keep your eyes open and watch for God at work all around you. Let us pray. Lord, we are ready to see what you are calling us to do, what you are calling us to be. Show us the way, Lord. Amen. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only always living in me.
Let us stand to receive the benediction. May the Holy Spirit fill you that you can see God all around you at all times and all places. And that through the Holy Spirit, you may be so filled that others will see Christ in you. Amen.